Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. Today I wanted to film another Vlogmas video. It's going to be a tag. I'm going to be doing Rinsey's 10 year challenge book tag that she created and it kind of asks you to look back at your reading and habits in 2009 and then compare them to 2019 to see how you have changed in the last 10 years. And there are 10 questions for this 10 year tag. Question number one is what was your favorite book in 2009? I went on my Goodreads. I started my Goodreads December 10th 2008 so it was perfect for this. I didn't read much in 2009 that I could tell but my favorite book probably from that year and thinking as a 16 year old teenage girl was The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. I believe it came out that year or the year prior. It was a very memorable book for 16 year old me. Funnily enough I reread it this year as an audiobook. It was still as captivating I thought. The things that I didn't love as much about it as I remembered was the romance stuff between Peter it just wasn't like my cup of tea as much as it was when I was younger but like the action and the way she's trying to basically say F you to this capitalist like enterprise still rang true and it was still pretty good. Question number two is what is your favorite book of 2019? I kind of searched high and low on my um, reading challenge for the year and just looked at covers and thought about like what spoke to me as like a favorite, a contender for my favorite this year and I think I'm going with Good Talk by Mira Jacob. I talked about this book in a few videos and what's interesting about this book is that it's kind of like a graphic novel but I wouldn't necessarily call it like a graphic memoir or a graphic novel. It's more like a biography and like conversations between different people in her life that she has that she shows to us through pictures. They're all like the same picture, like the same character has the same picture throughout and they're just like placed on different backgrounds and with different speech bubbles. And I've listened to some interviews with the author and she literally like learned how to draw to make this book. Uh, she'd only been a novelist before that. But it's got some very interesting discussions about belonging and what is being an American, how you talk to brown and black children about being American, also about just the current context of what's going on in the world. It's a book that talks about the Trump phenomenon but does it in a way that does not like aggravate or annoy me because I've read so many of those books this year. It's one that does it really in a way that I think added to something and intellectually for me. So I think it's a contender for best book. Question number three is what was your least favorite book in 2009? I'm gonna one-up whoever is making this video because I have video footage of me talking about my least favorite book of 2009. Um, it is Ghost Girl by Tanya Hurley. The review for Ghost Girl by Tanya Hurley. Ghost Girl was kind of a different story. It is not amazing. It is not something you're going to be blown away with. Everything that I expected to happen happened and I wasn't surprised. It's just all about popularity and the boy that she wants and stuff like that and it, it just it didn't excite me. It was just an okay read. The video footage of me talking about it is amazing. Like just the way, the inflection of my voice and how young I sound um, and the way that I describe books too. I think I ended up reading it like two stars on Goodreads and the way that I talked about it, it sounded like I really hated how much the main character cared about popularity in it. I had a book blog where I talked about it as well and in some of the comments someone replied, you just didn't get it. Uh, I got it. It's about wanting to be popular and it's not a topic that I care that much to read about. Question number four. What was your least favorite book in 2019? I guess the difference between this question is least favorite and most disappointing. Least favorite is just like a book that was not good for you. But most disappointing was something that you had a lot of expectations for and it didn't really pan out how you wanted it to. Where the Crawdads Sing, I have to say, by Delia Owens was not a good book for me. I attempted to read it for a lot of months. It's a book that has really like I feel like encapsulated the whole year. It's been on the New York Times bestseller list for like 58 weeks straight. It's something that still has so many holds at the library and it's just something that did not work out for me and I didn't think that that would be the case because there's like a murder mystery sort of story. I just couldn't get on with the writing and I was falling asleep reading it. On the audiobook, reading the physical book, it just wasn't working out for me which is sad because I would like to join in on everybody's love for this book. Another book that I was really disappointed in is probably my least favorite of the year is Under the Moon by Lauren Miracle. This was a book that I was really really looking forward to. It looks at Catwoman and Selena Kyle and her origin story. It's a YA graphic novel version of it. Yep, 
just not good. The writing was not good. Question number five is, what is a book published in 2009 that you still want to read? I picked two. One is The Lost City of Z, which is a nonfiction book where the author like goes to the Amazon and tries to retrace the steps of a famous explorer who disappeared in an expedition in the 1920s. And then it's kind of going back and forth between his experience and the experience of the people in the 1920s going through it. Published in 2009 and still on my TBR. And then another book that I still want to read from 2009 is When You Reach Me. This is a kind of like sci-fi time travel fantasy middle grade story and it won the new Barry, I want to say. It's one that I recommend all the time at the library, especially when people are asking me for sci-fi kind of books. I should try to read it. Question number six is what is a book published in 2019 you want to get to before 2020? Probably My Time Among the Whites by Janine Capo Crusette. It's a book that I mentioned in my last video, I want to say, depending on how my pre-filming is going. It's a book that I'm really excited to get to. It's pretty short. I feel like I'm going to get to it by the end of the year. Question number seven, what is a genre you used to read a lot of that you don't read as much of anymore? I'd probably say contemporary YA romance. It's something that I really loved 10 years ago and I can just remember like all the Sarah Dessen and um, Meg Cabot and Elizabeth, what's her name? Elizabeth Scott. I read so much Elizabeth Scott 10 years ago and it's not something that I really reach for anymore. I reach for some romance but the majority of the romance that I read is definitely adult romance. Question number eight is what is a new genre you've discovered since 2009? I'd say I really have gravitated towards nonfiction and maybe discovered like 2012-ish, 2013-ish, kind of like at the tail end of college and I haven't looked back since. Also mystery, I didn't used to read any mysteries. I haven't read one in a while but it's something that I wasn't really that interested in when I was younger and now I, I do like a good mystery. Also just in general graphic novels and memoirs as a format not something that I ever read 10 years ago. But I thought it was interesting Raina Telgemeier's first graphic novel came out in 2009 had no idea about it until like 2015. Question number nine is what is a reading or book habit you are hoping to leave behind in this decade? One bad one that I really want to get rid of is checking out lots of audiobooks on um, Libby or Overdrive and not getting to them in time and then they have to be returned because someone's waiting for them. Even when people are not waiting for them, even renewing them, I, I think is a bad habit for me. I need to try more samples of books because I can tell quickly when I'm listening in the first five, ten minutes if the audiobook is going to work for me or if it's a book that I need to read the physical copy of. I need to just use the suspend hold option more often and just be more uh, particular about which ones I put on hold just because I'm thinking of like how you know, regardless of if you read it or not, each use of that audiobook holds is being paid for by your library. That's not the same case when it comes to like physical books. So that's why I think it's a bad habit for my audiobook self to be doing this on e-audiobooks. Question number 10 is what is a new reading goal or habit you want to create in the upcoming decade? I want to go back to listening while I'm on my commute to work. I really haven't been doing that in the past couple months. I've recently got a Spotify premium account. I've just been listening to a lot of music on my drive to work and also when it's like snowing on my drive to work I really don't like listening to audiobooks because I can barely concentrate and I'm like already panicking and freezing while driving on snow-packed roads but hopefully the weather is getting better. Hopefully I'm getting better at driving in the snow. I would really like to go back to listening to audiobooks on my commute because that's how I get through a lot of audiobooks. I also would like to write something in my journal of every single book that I read in 2020. Just like a little blurb, maybe put a little picture, do something fun like that. I keep a Excel sheet of everything that I read, but I think I would like how I would look on a, on a notebook too. And that's it for this book tag. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.